tonight on the South today. Hundreds angrily rally on Otago University grounds, protesting against the scale of looming financial cuts. One Southern local is getting ready to represent New Zealand on the other side of the world with his scooter. And something unpleasant in the Christchurch air. Residents turn up their noses saying they've had enough. Kia ora, good evening. I'm Hannah Wilkins. Vocal protesters from a newly formed three-pronged group are making their feelings heard loud and clear in Dunedin, rallying against impending Otago University staff cuts. Strong emotions were on display throughout Otago University on Wednesday. Members of the Protect Otago Action Group were part of the 400 protesters chanting and waving signs through campus, expressing their anger towards the institution. The protest follows an announcement from the university in April saying it was facing a $60 million budget deficit. They have since been calling for voluntary redundancies, ahead of further cuts across academic and administration staff. The action groups working to unite university staff, students and the general community, taking matters into their own hands. Community representative Tyler West riled up protesters with a short speech before joining in the march towards the union lawn. The action groups say this protest is just the start for them as they look to continue the fight holding more events next semester. In Dunedin, the South Today. A Dunedin mental health ward could be facing further cuts as concerns of a national shortage of forensic psychiatrists continues. Wakari Hospital's Ward 9A currently has just over 16 full-time equivalent staff, which is only half the number needed to fully operate. Difficulties in recruiting qualified workers is causing the ward capacity to decline, and it's in desperate need of better resourcing. The shortage of staff, combined with the increased number of psychiatric care needed, is creating dangerous conditions for patients and those looking after them. However, staff say the current capacity is only temporary, hoping to increase the number of beds as soon as they are better resourced. A local Queenstown scooter rider is carving his way to the top. Corey Griffiths is set to make his mark on the global stage as he gets ready to head off to the World Scooter Championships. Grinding his way to the top is Queenstown scooter guy Corey Griffiths gets ready to travel to Madrid, Spain for the World Scooter Championships. It's the biggest event of the fast-growing sport with serious world ranking points on offer for successful riders. Griffiths qualified to compete at the Champs in February this year after finishing in the top 10 at the FRS New Zealand Scooter Champs in Napier. Um, top 10 qualifiers for Worlds and I managed to slip into top 10 and um, I got the email a couple months ago saying I'm a part of the New Zealand Scooter team and um, I, can go qualify, uh, I can go compete at World Champs. The World Champs are on in mid-June with competitors able to compete in the two specialties Park and Street. Griffiths is hoping to make an impact in the street section, which focuses on rails, ledges and ground tricks. So the street section is filled with rails and ledges. It's um, lots of grinds, lots of precision. The scooters aren't very big, um, so we've got to be pretty precise to grind those rails, balance and um, all that technical stuff. You know. The Central Otago and scooter communities have come together to help get him to Spain, with more than $1,600 raised on a Give a Little page for Griffiths along with being featured on North Beach's Instagram and Facebook pages. Corey Griffiths heads to Madrid next Tuesday, giving him a few days to get some practice in ahead of the big three-day world champs. In Queenstown, the South Today. A large electronic retail store is closing its doors for good on Dunedin's George Street, following loud noises coming from roadworks. Noel Leeming had a review of their George Street store's performance last month, making the decision to not renew their lease. This comes off the back of a large number of stores complaining down the main street, with the loud roadworks causing problems with their business. Many places have signs in their windows ensuring customers they are open, but have their doors closed to keep the noise from drowning out the work inside. Foot traffic has also been affected by the upgrades on the street, which is one of the factors taken into account by Noel Leeming to shut down their store. They're scheduled to close their doors for good on Friday, 
but their much larger Crawford Street location will remain open for business. In Dunedin, the South Today. An unpleasant smell is plaguing a residential Christchurch area, forcing locals to seek urgent council intervention to address concerns against a compost plant. One resident has taken the battle to social media, claiming the increasing stench is causing torturous conditions and affecting their quality of life. Christchurch locals are living with a stink. A fed-up Bromley woman has taken to social media, pleading for help to put pressure on the council hoping to shut down their Living Earth Organics compost plant in the area. OK guys, I've had about a guts full of this. It's Sunday morning, just got up, had some breakfast, opened the door and put my washing out, and it reeks of silage. It absolutely stinks. Residents say they've been tortured by a worsening stench from the compost plant, aggravating those with health conditions and ruining their quality of life. Well, I can't live in this grotesque pollution that is making me very ill actually and it's not just me, there's lots of other people around here, both physically and mentally ill. Councillors have agreed to move the organics processing plant. A final report is expected to be presented to Council for consideration early next year and a contract awarded by February 2024. They're saying it's three to five years can't live here for that. Can't sell our homes because who wants to buy a home that smells? Um, and you know, you don't want to put another family into this predicament. Walker says she is at breaking point with the overpowering vomit like stench, causing her a long list of health issues. Also having to go on asthma medication. I want my health back. Money can't buy health. I want my mental health, my physical health. I want, I want to be able to live in my home. Walker says her and her supporters are gearing up for a strong showing at a council meeting later next month when the issue is due to be discussed. In Christchurch, the South Today. FIA Kine still to come on the South Today. An exciting opportunity opens up with Dunedin's all-female barbershop group and helmets are needed in Wyndham for school kids to enjoy their new play equipment. Happy birthday, Charlie! Lounge and dining are reduced by 25%. There's 30% off beds and bedroom furniture. And he's taken 50% off selected clearance items. My mate, John. Aero. Used by Australia's top bowlers with their unique Z-Scoop grip that redefines the game. Machined with robotics for unparalleled accuracy. Aero. Same line, every time. Here at Age Concern Otago, we offer a range of services to support Otago seniors to age well with dignity and independence. We provide social work support, visiting service, health promotion and social activities. Check out what we have on offer at ageconcernotago.com. Drive away your way with three incredible offers on the Honda CRV Adventure Ready Range. Choose from 2.9% finance with zero deposit, third, third, third finance, or lease a new CRV from just $136 per week. These offers are only available for a limited time, so be in quick. From Honda. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life.
Tinakwe, welcome back. A Dunedin all female barbershop group is looking for new recruits, with two local songbirds separated by generations, excited to share the joy of singing. If I eat three turkey dinners and enough that's just beginners, ain't nobody. Pat Webster and Heather Cunningham are the oldest and youngest members of the Dunedin Harmony Chorus, with half a century between them. The 25 member group are preparing to host a six week singers course, hoping to encourage new females of all ages to join. The duo say it's not just about singing, it's about getting out there and giving it a go as a team. <laughs> Everybody has to pull together, and being a smallish yeah. group, um, everybody has a job to do, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which includes singing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The singing course starts later this month, offering the rare opportunity to perform with the group at an event in August. Wishes really do come true, and a Southland primary school has a new addition to prove it. Pupils at Wyndham School are strapping on their helmets as they celebrate the opening of a new bike track. Kids carving up the pavement as they enjoy a new way to ride at school. Pupils from Wyndham had their dreams come true, with a brand new bike track opening at the rural Southland School. Last year, Principal Catherine Lewis asked staff and pupils what facilities they wished the school could have, with the bike track being at the top of their list. It's an amazing addition to our school. We have lovely school grounds, we're very lucky, but it's not just for our school, it's for the Wyndham community, so it's, it's fabulous. The newly completed loop tracks around 300 metres long, providing endless fun for school kids and the wider community. The project was fundraised through the school's family, raffles and with the assistance of some grants applied for by the PTA. We as a PTA thought why not, let's give it a go um, and yeah, now we're standing here not quite eight months later with a fully asphalted planted out bike track. The bike track will be shared between the junior and senior schools on a roster basis with bike monitor duties being carried out by the senior students. Sponsors have also provided 40 bikes and helmets to the small school to help encourage kids to get active outdoors. In Wyndham, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. New protects Otago Action Group members marched through Otago University protesting proposed cuts. Dunedin's Corey Griffiths is set to fly to Madrid to represent New Zealand in the World Scooter Championships. And the stench of a compost plant in Christchurch has forced locals to seek council intervention. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. We welcome Associate Editor Mike Houlihan. Hello Mike. Hello Hannah. What can we expect in the paper tomorrow? Well, I'll follow up to that university protest story you had just then actually. There was a staff meeting today. We've got some of the details of what the staff were told about what's going on at the university. And okay. we'll bring those to, uh, to readers tomorrow. That'll be good, yes. Uh, we've also got an update on the on viral waste and the future of recycling in Dunedin. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, the fact that it was the hottest June day in history today. If you thought it was warm, you were right. It was 20.8 degrees in Dunedin today. Wow. It did feel warm, <laughs> It certainly was. Uh, we've got uh, coverage of the Luma uh, Light Festival in Queenstown, which opens tonight. Mm -hmm. And but in Friday, our sports tabloid, which has coverage of the Highlanders, the Nuggets, and also the usual rep club rugby. Brilliant. Well, we look forward to reading the papers tomorrow. Thank you for sharing this evening. Thank you. And time now for a look at the weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by Mormon, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, southwesterly airflow will become colder from tomorrow with widespread showers and alpine snow due at the weekend. Heading to the top of the South Island, gusty westerlies with some cloud and 16 degrees up in Nelson tomorrow, 14 with fresh winds and showers in Greymouth and a fine 16 in Christchurch. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago, gusty westerlies on what will otherwise be a fine day here tomorrow. It's 3 from 3 too, with 15 degree highs for Ashburton, Timaru and Awamaru. Heading westwards to the Central Lakes, 12 tomorrow in Wanaka and Queenstown with strong westerlies, while Alexandra gets a warmer 14 with those winds. 
Heading further south, showers and strong southwesterlies tomorrow with cool highs of 11 degrees for Gore, Balclutha and the Catlins. And down to the deep south, showers tonight with a low of 8 in Invercargill. Tomorrow and Saturday will be cloudy with showers and gusty southwesterlies at times, up to 11 on Friday and 10 on Saturday. And finally, heading to Dunedin, northwesterlies and a low of 9 overnight. Then fine tomorrow with a mix of sun, scattered cloud and strong westerlies with a high of 15. And Saturday is another 15 degree day with a sunny afternoon and changing winds to kickstart King's Birthday weekend. And that's the news this Thursday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. You can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. We're also on Facebook. Just search for The South Today NZ to see our favourite stories from around the regions. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite o popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.